Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and today's topic is going to be about whether we should run our effects in our signal chain within our Helix in series or in parallel. Now this is a topic I've been receiving a lot of questions about recently. I did do a video on in the Creating a Great Tone series about using split blocks, which talked a little bit about this, but I wanna go a little bit more in depth today and discuss some of the reasons why we would or wouldn't do certain things based off the questions that I've recently been getting. But to be able to do that, we have to understand first what series and parallel actually is and what it's designed to do and not to do. So. If we talk about running something in an audio signal chain in series, we're talking about feeding one element, let's call it, of that signal chain directly into the next element, which would then feed the next to the next to the next. For instance, we have an amplifier feeding into a, a speaker cabinet, feeding into possibly a delay. Uh, and I'm talking in, in, a, in a helix signal chain. We could also put that delay in between the uh, amp and the cab and, and any sort of configuration we can think of. There's too many to keep talking about. But we would continue that signal flow going through one element such as an amp into another element such as a speaker cab into another element such as an effects processor, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what obviously is going to happen is whatever <clears throat> is processed first is then whatever that creates will be processed by the next step of the chain and so on and so forth. Sometimes though, maybe we don't want a piece of our signal chain processed by something that comes after it. And that's where the idea of parallel effects come in, right? <clears throat> so with a parallel effects chain, we would take a split off of our main chain, you know, take the signal at a certain specific point in time, send it to a different path or signal chain, and then run that through uh, whatever processing we want to use on the parallel path and then merge it or blend it or mix it back into the main signal path. Therefore, whatever we put on the parallel path would bypass anything we didn't want it to be processed by. And it's going to be a lot easier to see visually when we talk about it on the Helix because things are laid out in paths. So let's do this. Let's jump over to HX Edit and take a look and start sort of examining this, what can be a fairly deep topic. So let's go over to HX Edit. Okay, so here we are on HX Edit, and I have a very simple little preset set up here with just an amp. I, I chose the Interstate Z to it through a 212 Interstate, and I got this sound going. So what if uh, we wanted to add, let's, let's go with some reverb on this. Now, you know, conventional wisdom says let's just add a reverb. Here, we'll go with a legacy. I'll go with a hall reverb let's say, and I'll crank it up fairly high here and give us a fairly good mix, put the trails on. Now, what we have here is gonna be a fair amount of reverb. All right, it's fine. That's how I will normally set up a reverb. What the Helix gives us the unique ability to do is very simply run in parallel. So let's say that I had a delay before this and I'll grab a transistor tape. Well, what's gonna happen now is my amp is going to feed in series to my delay, which is going to feed in series to my reverb. But here's the potential problem, depending on what, our, what we want our final outcome to be. Anything this delay process, all the echoes are also going to run through the reverb, therefore making our echo repeats have reverb on them. That might be fine. You can hear as those echoes go, they continue to have reverb on them. Now, the Helix gives us this unique ability to grab that block and pull it down. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have the signal split off, feed the delay, and merge back in after the reverb so that it doesn't get affected by the reverb. How does that sound? Do you hear how those delayed repeats no longer have the reverb on them? So we're going to dive into this topic a little bit uh, in just a couple minutes. But first I wanted to discuss something that I've been getting a lot of questions about. A lot of folks will ask me in my presets why I'm not maybe running my reverb on a parallel path instead of straight through. Um, so that would mean something more like this where I would pull the reverb down. And now with the same settings, I have my dry path going over here. So my dry signal will feed straight out and I will split off and run the reverb in and then merge it back over here. Now, at first glance, this might seem like it could be useful. Let's listen to what it sounds like. 
To really test this, what we would have to do is set up two snapshots, one with the reverb on our normal path A and one with it running in parallel, match the volume levels and then compare if there is a difference. I don't really ever see the point in doing it this way, simply because we already have a mix control on our reverb. So if I go back to um, my normal series path here and, and take the mix down to zero, There's no difference between having the reverb on and off. We're getting all our direct signals. So if anybody doesn't understand what a mix control does, a mix control simply allows us to blend our direct signal with our wet signal or our affected signal. So if I take the mix control on the reverb and go 100%, I no longer have any direct signal. can be a cool effect, but we lose all of that direct signal. If we go somewhere in between, we get an equal mix, let's go 50%, equal mix of direct and affected signal. So pulling this down really doesn't do anything for us. It's not gonna magically make the reverb better as some questions that I've got recently have kind of implied. Uh, it's just going to give us a much more complicated way of mixing the signal back in with the direct signal, which we already have the ability to do with the mix control, okay? Now to prove that, I wanna go over to a little more fine-tuned um, version of this preset. Okay, so here we are with the, basically the same preset. Now what I've done is I've set up two snapshots, one that says series and one that says parallel. And what you will notice is when I'm in the series one, I have uh, the hall reverb on the series path with the parallel path totally disengaged, okay? It's not even on, it's not in there. When I go to the parallel path, I disengage the series reverb and I go to a parallel reverb. Now the thing about it is because the settings are different, uh, we have to volume match. If we are listening to something and hearing one louder or one quieter, then we're automatically going to gravitate towards usually the louder one to say, oh, that sounds better, right? Or maybe one of them has more direct signal, which could be accomplished just by getting the mix right on the other one. So we really have to try to be as scientific about this to really see if there's a difference between running these in parallel or series. So what I've done is I have a split AB with an even split between them. I have my parallel reverb running with a mix of 100%. I've tried to balance this by ear as best as possible and I've found that the hall reverb on the series path with a mix of 38% with all the other settings is very close. I've come to my merge block and I've lowered the B level by 8 dB to kind of get it to match what the verb is doing on the series path. Um, so I've kind of got them close, but just so that, like I said, we're comparing apples to apples and not just hearing more reverb or more direct signal on one or the other, which doesn't really show that one is better than the other, it just shows that the settings are different, right? So as you can see, doing the parallel path is, is there's just a lot more finagling. I've also had to boost the signal between the series. Uh, the series is at 3 dB, parallel, parallel is at plus 6 dB. And I've measured this with my loudness meter to have it within 0.1 dB of a difference. So we're hearing the same volume and I've, I've used my ears to kind of match as close as I can on the amount of reverb. So this isn't, this is as scientific as I can get and I think it's pretty close. Now the only other thing I want to do is I want to use a looper at the beginning of the chain so that we're hearing the exact same performance as well. And this is another thing a lot of times when we are, are comparing whether one's tone is better or another, and we're playing different things, maybe we're hitting the strings harder on one or softer on another, it just adds in another variable that, that confuses things to whether we're actually hearing better tone or a better preset or better settings, or if we're just hearing a performance difference. So we get rid of that by doing the looper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop just a one chord stab and let the, the, the uh, reverb decay so that we can hear the direct tone and then we can hear the reverb decay. And we'll bounce back and forth between the series and parallel with that loop playing. And you tell me if you can hear any appreciable difference. 
It's possible that there's a difference just because I haven't dialed in the mix precisely the same, but I think it's pretty close and I don't think anybody's going to really hear a huge difference. So let me just do a quick loop and then we'll take a listen. Okay, so here we are. I've just done this really quick loop. One chord stab sounds like this. We can hear the chord, the direct signal, and we can hear the decay on the reverb. And what I will do is I'll start that and then I'm going to switch back and forth between the parallel and the series path. With the settings I showed you, you tell me if you hear anything that sounds better as far as the reverb goes. It's really just about balancing the direct signal with the reverberated signal. And like I said, we already have a mix control on our reverb to be able to do that without finagling and going down to a, and possibly even wasting a split path for no real appreciable difference. So let's take a listen to that, okay? Okay, so what do you guys think? I, I mean, if there is a difference, it's simply because I haven't matched the mix control perfectly. But really, just by using the mix and going a percent or two above or below, we're going to be able to get it almost indistinguishable between the two. So there isn't anything magic happening by pulling a reverb or any other effect down to a parallel path just for the sake of doing it. We're going to be able to accomplish the same thing by, by simply manipulating our mix control, which allows us to balance the direct signal to the affected signal in however much we want. And that's why I just simply do that, just to answer the question that I've got a fair amount in the recent past. So if series and parallel doesn't make a difference when we're dealing with one effect like that, or it can easily be achieved without going through all that kind of finagling, then what could it be used for? Well, one of the best examples I believe out there, and the example I used in the previous video I did, was when we're running a delay and a reverb together. Now, a lot of folks will put their delay before their reverb. Some might do it different, and there's no right or wrong. That's not what this is about. However, whatever gets you, as I've said a million times, your final result the way you want it is how you should do it, right? So uh, I'm never telling anybody they should or should not do something a certain way. But a lot of folks will do this. They will run, you know, let's say a very simple path here, amp cab into delay into reverb. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, our delay repeats are now also going to be fed through the reverb. I happen to almost always like it this way. There's probably situations where I would do it different, but for the most part, I like it that way. But let's say somebody says, I really hate the fact that, you know, I've got a big reverb on my sound. And I don't want the delayed repeats to have that reverb on it. Well, it gives us the option to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this delay and I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to merge it in after the reverb. So for the series snapshot, I'm going to turn the parallel path uh, delay off. For the parallel path, I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna turn the series off. So, but just to let us hear what the difference is between hearing the delay going through the reverb and around it, and I think it'll give you a good idea as to why we might want to actually use parallel processing at times. So here is the series. So we can hear the delayed repeats going through the reverb and they have reverb on them. Every time one of those repeats happens, it re-triggers the reverb and adds reverb to that delay. Now, if I go to parallel, so we can hear clearly on parallel, there's no reverb on the repeats. They're dry, but if we go to series, we have reverb on those repeats. So a very big difference. There's no right or wrong, okay? But that's why I would use a parallel processing. Another example might be, what if in this case, I wanted the reverb, let's say, on our delayed repeats. I could simply merge this back in. I wouldn't do this in this manner because that's gonna be really no different than 
just having it up here and using the mix control, right? But what if I said, you know, I would love to add some modulation to my repeats on my delays. So I could add a block after this and go to, I don't know, maybe a, a chorus and, and really crank the depth up. Um, and now what's gonna happen is I'm going to feed this off, I'm going to come through the delay, which just the delayed repeats are gonna have chorus on them. I'm gonna merge that back in so that all gets reverberated and then out. If I had put this chorus on the signal path up top, not only would my delayed repeats be chorused, but also my direct signal. This way, no direct signal is going to be chorused. And one other step I would wanna take in this case here is to come over to our split AB. I'm gonna route it all to A right now. Um, I'm going to turn the mix on my delay up to 100%, okay? So right now, because I came up to my split AB and went A100, I'm not gonna have any of the delay, the chorus delay. And I can even get rid of this delay so it's not confusing anybody. And my reverb is actually off here. Let me turn that on. Now, if I go to B100, I'm getting nothing, no direct signal. I'm only getting my delayed repeats with chorus on. If I go 50-50 now, I'm going to be blending in the direct signal with no delay and no chorus with the delay with chorus only. So you'll notice that our, our dry path is just reverb on it as we've set it up. There's no chorus on it. The initial hit has no chorus. It's only the delayed repeats that have chorus. Now, I could say that's way too much delay with chorus, so I could roll that back to, let's say, A50, so that I'm gonna get more direct signal with less of the chorus delay. And it's gonna be up to us to decide how much of that we want. I can go A70. And again, we could say, well, I don't want that going into the reverb, so I'll pull this after the reverb and have a different sound again. And now we don't have the chorus delay being reverberated. And again, we would use our split AB to decide how much of that chorus delay we want back into it. some interesting possibilities. So you can imagine the possibilities with this when we talk about, wow, I could add, you know, certain effects to other effects without affecting my direct signal and so on and so forth. The, the, the possibilities become kind of endless. And, you know, I could sit here and do a two hour long video coming up with all sorts of ideas, but I think you get the idea and that'll allow you to be creative with it. But what that parallel path in my estimation shouldn't really be used for is if we're just splitting one effect off and, and somehow thinking that that's doing something for us. It may seem like it when we first pull it down because the settings are all different and we're not comparing apples to apples. We're hearing more direct signal or more reverb or whatever. But when we go in and balance it out so that the mixes and the volumes are the same, we realize quickly by pulling, let's say, a reverb down to that path, it's not gonna magically improve the sound of the reverb. It's still just the reverb mixed with the dry signal, which we can do simply with the mix control within 
in this case, the reverb or the delay or whatever else. We can go all dry signal, as I showed before. We can go all wet and we can go anywhere in between with it. So that's just a much simpler way of doing it. We can also use it with compression. You know, the parallel compression where you have part of the dry uncompressed signal mixed in with the compressed signal. And we can do that in the Helix as well without split pass simply because we have something like, let's say the LA Studio Comp with a mix control. So understanding that mix control and how it works can save us a lot of the finagling of kind of moving things around to paths and even wasting our split path potentially for using it for something else. So I hope that helps some folks. I've been getting a ton of questions about that lately and I just want to clear that up and, and some of the ways I use it and the ways that I kind of think about it. and I think you can hear from the examples that uh, you know it's pretty clear how, how these things work. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. Please share the video with anybody who you think could find it of use. Uh, please like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the little bell notification uh, to get notified when I put new videos out. I'll have a lot of new stuff coming out, some exciting things coming out gear wise. Uh, in the in the near to, to medium uh, future so uh, stay tuned for that and thank you guys all so much for your support I really do appreciate it and I will be back soon with some more content ciao for now